CES is in full swing, and this video we're going to go over some of the cool Apple-related and even some of the non-Apple-related just random tech that I've seen so far this week. Now, I did get to check out Clicks, the physical keyboard case for your iPhone 14 and 15, and I will say I might be ever so slightly biased in favor of Clicks due to the fact that it was co-developed by YouTuber and friend Michael Fisher, but I think if you're someone who loves the nostalgia of Blackberries and physical keyboards, you'll actually probably enjoy Clicks. The keyboard feels great, it's nice and tactile, and while I was pretty slow at first with typing and everything, uh, just simply from not being used to this form factor anymore, I can see where the speed will eventually kick in. Especially since this keyboard has some commands similar to stuff like on your Mac that really speeds things up, like command space for spotlight search, you can use command H to go home, and you can even press the space bar to scroll through web pages. The case is also super easy to slide on and off, just in case you don't actually want it all the time. Feels really good in the hand, and there's even this little leather part at the bottom of the back of the case here that just gives it an elegant touch. I did prefer the model for the iPhone 15 Pro Max just because of the extra space that you get with the keys, but this all does come at a price of making your iPhone a lot longer. Now, like I said, if you're someone who's into the idea of bringing back the physical keyboard to your iPhone, I think you'll love clicks. There are more colors that are going to be available in the future, along with the potential for more features with this hardware and software combo. Withings unveiled BMO, which can actually read your body temperature, provide medical grade ECG, can monitor blood oxygen levels, and even is a digital stethoscope to listen to your heart and lungs. This thing has a ton of health tech packed into it that's actually pretty wild, and from the brief interaction that I saw, I was actually really impressed. I also got a closer look at Afila, which is the electric car that Sony and Honda are partnering on. It actually looks really good in person, and from what I can tell with the interior, it does seem to be packed with quite a bit of tech. There's actually a lot of tech throughout the entire car, really, and a lot of unique and interesting sensors designed for driver customability and safety. I do hope this car actually makes it out to consumers in the not-too-distant future. The Barsis 360 is an interesting one. It's a smart cocktail machine that can basically give you bartender-grade drinks, and you can use the corresponding iPhone app to find new drinks, customize the drinks to your liking, and then send your drink recipe to the machine where it will mix and pour you the perfect cocktail. I did try out some of this, and honestly, it tasted really good. Then we get into the land of Qi2 chargers, GAN chargers, and docks, and there were tons of these products from various companies just scattered throughout CES, so let's quickly highlight some that caught my attention. Uh, ESR had a new Qi2 6-in-1 charging dock, so you have your standard 3-in-1, the MagSafe dock for your iPhone, the Apple Watch part here, and then the AirPods at the bottom, but then there are two USB-C and one USB-A port to charge even more devices. Anchor is kind of one-upping or two-upping uh, with the 8-in-1 charging dock, so if you need more ports and then you want to dock your iPhone and charge it via MagSafe, you can do all of that at the same time. And Hyper had some 3-in-1 Qi2 options that kind of remind me of my favorite travel accessory, which is that folding Anchor 3-in-1 cube. Yeah, it reminded me a lot of that, and uh, this is now rated for Qi2 charging. Now, in terms of docks, Targus has a dock that can connect two laptops together with three monitors as well, and even act as a KVM between each laptop. So this demo showed a Windows machine that was using these two monitors here on the left and center, and then on the right, we had a Mac. And so let's say you have your mouse, your headset, other peripherals connected to the dock. You can drag your mouse from your Windows machine instantly over to your Mac. Your headset and all the other connected peripherals will instantly switch over. And it worked really, really well. It's very seamless. Like, it, you don't even notice that you're switching between entirely different machines and operating systems. That's how well it worked. This is perfect for those who have a work computer or a personal computer, or maybe you have a gaming PC and then a Mac for work. You can connect both machines to these monitors, and it'll work perfectly fine together. Targus also showed off the first ever ambidextrous mouse. I honestly didn't believe that when they told me because I just assumed this has been done before, but apparently not. Anyways, if you have a divided household of left and right-handed mouse users, uh, you can easily switch this mouse around to either orientation to suit that person. 
Lastly, there were tons of AR VR options out there, even some that apparently uh, borrow, to be polite, its design elements from a certain headset that's due to arrive very, very soon. But the one that I did test and was semi-surprised on was the X-Real AR glasses. So the glasses have a 1080p display for each eye that, honestly, I thought it was even higher than that. That's how good it looked. It was very crisp and clear and sharp, uh, though when the glasses shift around on your face, that obviously tends to, uh, the clarity kind of comes in and out. The glasses can also interact with these pads that don't have any tech inside of them whatsoever. They're just like little felt pads uh, that you can kind of shift around and uh, it does different things. And that's the glasses using its cameras to monitor what you're doing with the pads and and then it changes the UI uh, in correlation with whatever you do. And so you can switch from like messages and movies and, and more. This demo that I have on screen here that I'm filming is definitely underwhelming compared to actually trying it out. But there's really no way for me to show you that experience inside from this. I was actually pretty surprised at what you could do and how well the glasses integrate with things like the lights around me and Bluetooth speakers. Uh, so yeah, it was pretty cool to check out and something that I was very shocked at how well it worked. That's it for me from CES for now. If you want to see the other stuff that we checked out over the last week, definitely go back and check out our other videos and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any more future content. This has been Dan with Mac Rumors. Thanks so much for watching, and I hope to see you around in the next video.